Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are again. My name is Jesse Skelton. It's been a very long time since we spoke. I've been very busy and very lazy, but here I am again, and today we're going to be talking about null objects. Now, null objects are pretty simple in concept. Um, they are objects that exist, but don't really exist. So when you make one uh, up here, layer new um, null, uh, you're going to see it pops in uh, as a little red box. Uh, now that box doesn't actually show up in your render. These nulls are there, but they're not really there. That's why they call them null objects. So basically the premise is that you take your asset, whatever it may be, here it's a white square that I've made, and you just pick whip it over to your null, and it parents uh, the object to the null, and that way you can move the null around and uh, scale things rotate them and uh, you know pretty simple so what I want to do is show you guys some practical examples of what you would actually use these for because um, you can parent anything to anything so why null objects right well um, they let you do some pretty fun stuff and if I can bring up an example here I had this idea stirring around in my head for building an array out of null objects and how those would uh, let you sort of spin things around pause on one for a second and then sort of swing around other things. I think I was watching a car commercial like this and I thought, oh, how do they do that? And, you know, would you keyframe everything? Or, you know, it would probably be easier if you just slapped it on some nulls. So um, we're going to learn how to do that. We're also going to learn about um, how taking an animation like this, for example, where there's a bunch of masks and there's uh, animations happening, and how we can use a null object to move it all the way over without screwing up all the keyframes and the masks. Uh, so if you're not understanding how these masks are working with the uh, Luma mats, um, I have another tutorial called Creating Bumpers you can go check out um, that teaches you how this works. It basically makes it look like these are shooting out from nowhere. Um, basically what we're going to do is bring in a null object and uh, we can sort of uh, bring this out until the animation is complete so we can sort of eyeball where the middle point is. I mean it doesn't really matter. Uh, the nice thing about nulls is they will scale everything relatively. So, uh, in in uh, sort of it'll lock its ratio. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. You'll see. So we pick f pick whip everything to the null, or alternately you can just pull down the menu here and and choose the null to parent to. And uh, when we take our null and start moving it around, you'll see that um, we're not getting extra keyframes. It's just uh, letting us move that uh, animation around. You can see we can even have the animation at halfway, and we can have it move around. The keyframes aren't going to be messed up. The uh, masks are moving with us. You can see these are the two masks I set up. And um, it's great because you can scale, and you can rotate, and it keeps everything within its uh, the way you've designed it. So if we move to the end here, it's going to be all perfect. So uh, I'm going to show you guys really quickly now how to set up this array. Um, I've got these silhouettes that I've cut out. Um, okay, something very important here to remember when setting up these files. Um, when you are going to do this, the objects that you're having spinning around each other can't be vectors. Okay, They have to be rasterized images because if they aren't vectors, um, they're not going to show up in 3D space properly this one will be in front of this one, okay? Even though in 3D, you know, it's behind, so you may adjust your layers, but then this one will be in front of, you know, it's just not going to work, so they have to be rasterized. Um, and because it's a JPEG, it has a white background, so what's going to happen is when we put one guy over top of the other, you're going to see we get these clipping paths, or these masks we don't want. What we're looking to do is use the linear color key, and what that's going to do is actually allow us to choose the white and let's just bring this guy over top of one of these characters here. And, um, you know, you can see it's, it's a little messy, but we can actually go into the settings here and start playing with the matching tolerance. And we can always turn the softness up, maybe, and that should help. Okay, not perfect, but you know what? With more tweaking, it actually uh, can get pulled off. So, uh, you know, linear color key isn't perfect, but it works. Uh, if movements are quick, nobody's going to notice. 
So what we want to do is we want to just apply this color key. We can use the same one because they're all pretty much the same. Just copy that, um, paste it to this guy, and we're going to copy it and paste it to the woman. Well, we've already copied. We're just pasting. Okay. Okay, so... Um, the next step is to bring ourselves into two views and make all of our objects 3D. And what we need to do is... Just to help make this look a little better, we're going to do a few things here. We're going to add a ramp to this guy. But we don't actually want his feet to be white. We want them to be darker. Okay, so it's just a little bit of color change so that it looks better. Because the flat black is annoying me. I don't like the way that looks. Okay, um, bevel and emboss. And, you know, he's looking pretty... Uh, actually, that looks like crap, but you know what? Who cares? Okay, so we got man number one. Take that bevel off because it looks like crap. Ramp on these two. Okay, so we've got these three people. They're here in this 3D space here. We're on the top view. Let's just lock this background so we don't start hitting that accidentally. And what we need to do is you can bring in a guide of sorts. Um, I've done this with the star tool, but I think the circle tool or the ellipse tool would actually be a little bit better. So we hit apostrophe to bring up our safe zone so we can see where the center is. Click, then hold down command. We can start creating a circle from the middle. It's not perfect, but yeah, it's fine. So we've got this circle now. What we want to do is take it, uh, get rid of the fill. Uh, and put a stroke on it. We're just creating a guide right now. Okay, this is 3D. Make the circle 3D. Hit uh, W for rotate, and then we're going to rotate the x-axis until it is horizontal with the uh, ground, I guess you could say. Okay, so it's completely horizontal now. We've got this nice guide. And we're going to take the woman and we're going to move her up front. You know why? Because girl power, baby. Okay, so. Cool. It doesn't have to be perfect right now, but let's just take this shape layer and I don't want to get rid of it because we might need it later. So let's just make it like really low opacity. Like, I don't know, 10. Okay, we're going to lock it again just to keep it from getting messed up. Okay, here's the fun part. So, now that our array is set up, so to speak, we're going to plop in a null object. Uh, and again, we it plops into the middle automatically, so that's why we made the circle from the middle, and that's why we oriented everything to the circle, because the null object comes in, and it's going to be right there in the middle like that. But what we actually need to do is make sure that that's turned into a 3D object, or else these won't rotate properly. Okay? So, let's take our three figures, parent them to the null, okay, and then if you hit W, uh, it'll select, it's your rotation tool, and we're just going to rotate the Y axis, and you'll see what's happening here is our figures are rotating, so it's perfect, and it looks like they're pretty much staying on the circle, but you'll notice they're not facing the right way, it's just, it's just looking funky. Now the way to get them to look at the camera all the time is to go into your layer. We can select all of them. This works. You can do a batch at once. Right click, go up to transform, and then down to auto orient. Then we're going to select orient towards camera. And hit OK. So what's going to happen now is when you orient, uh, when you rotate, pardon me, you're going to see that each one of the figures still, okay, they're not doing it. One sec. Oh, that's strange. They should be, oh, it's because we don't have a camera. Okay, so we actually need a camera for things to auto-orient towards a camera. Who would have thought? Okay, so this sh maybe this will update automatically. Okay, perfect. So, you can see our figures are a little bit too close to the camera. So we're just going to, using our null object, we're just going to push them back a bit. Okay, 
That's going to frame our people a little bit nicer. And we don't really need this anymore, so we're just going to get rid of this guide layer. Okay, so now what you can do is you can keyframe your rotation here. I believe it would be Y, maybe? Maybe it's X. Oh, it's... Yeah, it's Y. Okay, so... I'm just going to use a uh, time asterisk 25 expression. So, um, our anchor points are way, way, way outside of the objects, and I'm not sure why I didn't notice this before, but uh, hey, you know what, that's life. Okay, anchor points, anchor points, anchor points. Basically, our anchor points determine where the rotation uh, happens, where it pivots. So, um, if you're having this issue, what you need to do is go in again with your pan behind tool. I don't know if we did this, but the pan behind tool will let you move your anchor points. Oh, we actually should unparent these first. Okay, and then what you're going to be able to do is come in here, grab your anchor point, and then move it into uh, the uh, object itself. Or else we're not going to have things rotating around properly. Okay, and the reason the, the objects are moving as we move the anchor point is because the, of the auto orient towards camera. Okay, so now if we take all of our objects, pick whip them to the null, um, it should, yeah, there we go. So one guy gets up to the front. Okay, so he gets featured, then then uh, it spins around and the next guy gets featured and uh, you notice you really need to make sure you're spacing your things out properly or else you know you're gonna go to this guy and the woman won't be in the right spot so you know I'm uh, not gonna get into it now but uh, it's it takes a little bit of playing around to make sure everything's in the right uh, you know located around the null evenly or else you're gonna get uh, weird stuff where people don't show up properly or they're not uh, spaced out properly Okay, so now that we've got everything set up in 3D space, uh, there's a really cool technique I wanted to show you guys called depth of field, and it can be found in your camera options, um, and uh, it's usually on by default, and essentially what it does is, uh, you'll see this in a lot of motion graphics, you'll see it in a lot of photography and film, um, it's, a, it's a really cool technique, it essentially makes everything outside of the focal point uh, blurry. So you'll, you'll see here the, the woman in the foreground is uh, nice and crisp, and the guys in the background there, are uh, they've been blurred out. So this is controlled by the focus distance and the aperture, the aperture controlling um, how crisp or how blurry uh, or how sensitive um, your blur is to that focal point, and then the focus distance actually measures that focal point itself. So you can see as we begin to rotate our figures, the character that was in the foreground that was very crisp has become blurred, and uh, the guy that's uh, come up front now is, has come into focus. So again, this is a really cool technique that's uh, pretty simple to achieve, but um, gives, your, gives your stuff a really, uh, sort of really nice uh, production value. Okay, so that's how you do that one. There's one final thing I wanted to show you guys. Uh, here's just another example of how I've used null objects. It was I wanted to make a butterfly look like it was sort of going across the screen, and I, I realized as I keyframed across, the wings were flapping and everything, but it didn't have that sort of uh, jitteriness that a normal butterfly would have, you know, flopping around, and it's not, uh, it's not really soaring, it's fluttering along. So what we need to do is bring open the key, uh, position, alt-click on the uh, position stopwatch, and then we're going to use an expression, wiggle, um, and I guess maybe, I don't know, three times a second, and we want it to wiggle over a space of about 10 pixels. Okay, so if we hit render, um, but we had this wiggle, so once you wiggle, we've already messed with our position. How do we do this, right? Well, you guessed it. We bring in a null object, we parent the butterfly to the null, the butterflies preserves its wiggle, and you can keyframe your null object from one side over to the other. And what you're going to get 
is as it's going boy this is going to be tough to show without rendering it so I'm just going to let it render basically what's going to happen is it's a little bit too far away I'll bring this in closer also, so you won't be able to see it it'll be a bit too quick okay low frame rates and trying to do stuff not fun okay we're going to let this render out So you can kind of see what's happening now, right? The um, the butterfly is following the null, which follows a straight path, but the butterfly itself has a wiggle on it. Okay, so you can see it's sort of wobbling around. Again, just another practical exam example of how to use nulls.